Hi, welcome back. I'm a programmer and you're watching Learn to Code. In this lecture, we are going to learn about scheduling a task in Java. How we can write a scheduling a task in Java? Java Thread API provides two classes, Timer class and Timer Task class. Timer class help us in spawning threads for executing all the scheduling task and also have the scheduling logic for the next task to run. Whereas the timer task is an abstract class, we have to extend the timer task class when creating our scheduling task. It also implements runnable interface, which will allow us to override the run method in our task class. That's enough for the theory. Let's jump into the coding and understand more about it. So please be sure you subscribe to my channel as I upload new tutorials every week. Let's create a file, remove daily file task. In this class, we are going to write code for removing files from a directory in my system. To make this class a scheduling task, we need to extend timer task. So extending it, timer task. Timer task internally implements a runnable interface. So we can override the run method in our class. I need a date formatter to use at multiple places. So I'm defining here at the class level. Private simple date format, date format equals new simple date format of this typical pattern. All right. Also, we need a task name to recognize the particular task. So I'm defining this private string task name. To read the task name, we need to define a constructor. So creating one. We are, we are going to talk a lot more about uh, scheduling. So we need to take a hold on the time at required places, isn't it? So for this, I'm defining a date, start time equals new date. And also we need schedule time as well, right? So date schedule time equals new date. Now in this, I'm passing super dot schedule execution time method. Actually, this method will return the time at which the most recent execution of this task is scheduled to occur. What does it really mean is that it will give us the schedule time of the next instance of task. We need a thread name as well. Let me write a string current thread name equals thread dot current thread dot get name. Now, the most important thing in programming world is to keep the track of your work. So I'm capturing this information in systemr.println and passing current thread name, task name, schedule time, and also the actual start time. All right. Now, here is a core logic of this requirement to delete or remove files from a directory on my system. So a string dir path location of the temp files directory. Let's go and copy paste the location of the directory. Now paste it. To read a file from dir path, I'm using file class. So file class directory equals new file here I am passing dir path, also defining a file array, list of files equals. Now from this directory, let's get the array of files by calling a method list files. So directory dot list files. By using for each loop, we can iterate the list of files and act on each file separately. In this case, file.delete. By this statement, file will be deleted. Also, adding a sys out here to know which file is deleting. System.out.println thread name deleting file.get name. After deleting the files, we are capturing some more info. Date and time equals new date systemr.println let's put current thread name task name and a message cleanup job finished at 
then date format dot format and time concat with start delayed by dot uppercase concat with run duration dot uppercase so start delayed by concat get time difference between the schedule time and start time run duration concat get time difference get time difference between start time and end time let's write the implementation of get time difference method get time difference make it private and return a string it can accept two argument as long so implementation is double in seconds equal t2 minus t1 divided by 1000 format these seconds into a string so a string seconds equal a string dot format percent dot 3f comma in seconds and it will return seconds beautiful before we jump into the main driver class we need to understand few methods of timer class these are the two methods which are used for one time execution and accept two argument one as in timer task object and another one as time the next two methods accept three arguments and these help us to run a task which will be executed repeatedly at a given interval of time this is sometime called as fixed delay execution schedule at fixed rate will help us in running scheduling task after exact time interval without any drift in the time now the cancel will help us to terminate upcoming execution and do not interfere in the currently running task let's go to our main driver class now here we have one sysout at the beginning of main method and another at the end and a simple date formatter to help us in printing time i'm creating an instance of timer class here timer Timer equals new timer. I'm gonna mention timer thread name here, timer underscore thread. It is not going to be a daemon thread, so I'm mentioning false. I want to schedule my task after some delay time. So let's mention long delay time equals 2000 milliseconds. And a sysout system out dot println thread dot current thread dot get name concat with scheduled cleanup task to run after delay time let's call the schedule method from the timer instance timer dot schedule in this i am passing remove daily file task object and passing its name in a constructor task one second argument is delay time all right let's run it and analyze the output So main thread trigger the timer thread which in turns invoke remove daily file task to run after 2000 milliseconds. Immediately the timer thread started its execution and removed file from the directory. Our job is completed but thread is still running. This is happening as the thread is not terminated by anyone. So we need to call a cancel method to terminate the timer thread. So I'm calling timer.cancel and also placing sleep of 20 seconds so that the job can complete some of its task before the cancel method is triggered. Let's run it again. As you see, the task triggered and deleted all the files and timer ran for 20 seconds and terminated. Now let's make the timer as a daemon thread. Marking is daemon flag as true. As a daemon, it will be terminated when it is no longer in use. Also, let's comment this timer.schedule method and write a new one with the date timer.schedule. Now, this is the second method we have seen earlier. So, in this, we will pass new remove daily file task. comma new date let's run it again and analyze the output files has been deleted by the timer thread 
and uh, the start delayed by 0 seconds and the run duration is 0 0.061 seconds. Timer thread is ended and it will not delete any other file which comes into that directory. So to overcome that, we can use the another overlaid schedule method which accept uh, uh, another argument seconds means timer thread will run after every given second. So this one was the one time execution. Now let's see the fixed delay execution. In this timer will run after every given second. Timer dot schedule pass the object of remove daily file task task 3 comma new date comma period 40,000 milliseconds. Let me convert this sysout millisecond into seconds. Delay time divided by 1000. Oh, let me change this 40 to 3000 millisecond. Also, let's go to the remove daily file task and add 1000 millisecond sleep time before deleting each and every file. So, adding surround sleep with try catch. Alright, let me change this to seconds. 30 and here for period 3000 millisecond let's just uh, place the delay time here okay okay sleep time should be 40 seconds so that we get enough time for analyzing task will run for total 40 seconds and will be repeated at an interval of 4 seconds let's run it and see the output as you see Timer thread started at 18, 16, 0, 7, 6, 3, 3. Then it deleted all the files and ran for 10.07 seconds. So job finished at 18, 16, 17.0709. So as you see the next schedule time is after the first job finished which is not right. By using the fixed delay, we have been promised that it will run each and every 4 seconds. But it doesn't really work that way. So there is a drift in time of next schedule task. So how we can prevent this drift in the schedule and the actual time run? We need to use the third and the last approach which is fixed rate execution. In this timer thread is scheduled to run after exact time interval. Let me call timer dot schedule at fixed rate. We need to pass the remove daily file task object task 4 then new date and period. Let's run it again. As you see it is scheduled after every 4 seconds. First cleanup took around 10 seconds, but the next schedule time didn't change. Awesome, we have completed the series of multi-threading in Java. Thanks again. See you in another tutorial. Till then, bye and take care.